we're back where it all began. Barcelona. EPT9 kicks off with the biggest poker festival Spain's ever held and the biggest super high roller field we've ever seen. For me, the most exciting events were always the super high rollers. Right now, I really do want to win this tournament, but you know, a top three finish, I'll probably overall be pretty happy with. The best K, and on the two days, 55 have become eight, which means it's final table time. This is the Pokestars.com EPT Super High Roller. Champion. Welcome to the winner ceremony of the EPT Barcelona Super High Roller. A rare kind of patience. We're down to our final eight players. A determination to succeed. The fates of eight poker players will be decided on this very stage. And no one knows more about taking down the title than eight-time World Series bracelet winner Eric Seidel. They'll have to stay hungry in hopes to fend off the young guns. I see all these young kids, and some of them are like straight out of the sandbox. It's very funny to play with them. Poker's wonderkid Mike McDonald tasted victory as the youngest EPT main event winner ever. But did he bring that success to the super high roller stage? I think I've played four of them, and I haven't cashed a single one. Will the title be taken by an amateur poker enthusiast? Driven by the excitement of competition, can one of these two businessmen become our number one? Irani Sahamias will be looking to showcase the same dominance he's had in the high stakes cash games. Fearless and unpredictable, this spin is looking to crush the competition. For Mexican pro JC Alvarado, it's about the accomplishment. This is the biggest buying event he's ever played. A winner who changes life forever. This is, would be the most prestigious thing I've won, for sure. In the six years he's played, Mike Watson has accumulated millions of dollars in live tournament earnings. Short stack or not, he's a dangerous player. And Mike's good friend and roommate Dan Smith has been prolific in 2012, earning over two million dollars. He comes into this final table as chip leader and is looking to add a second super high roller title to his resume. When you're on a winning streak, your confidence is at an all-time high. As we anticipate the future, let's look to the past and see how we got to this stage. Well, this 50k re-entry event played havoc with a lot of players' emotions and bankrolls. Phil Ivey found himself down 100k after he was eliminated not once but twice by Italian player Raphael Gerby. But Gerby was unable to put Ivey's chips to use. He was out shortly after. The third time was not the charm for Jonathan Duramel. He couldn't find any luck after he fought it three times. In fact, none of the players who were loaded here in Barcelona made the final table. It was a better day for Dan Smith, who dominated the seedings, and finished day two by busting bubble boy Artem Lindelof. Hello, it's James Hartigan and Joe Stapleton welcoming you to the first final table of season nine. And as we've come to expect on the EPT, there's an international mix and a combo of pros and amateurs. You know, I resent that. This is my third season on the tour. I was talking about the players, obviously. All right, well, let's focus on the chip leader then, Danny Smith. There's a reason they call him King Dan, because yesterday he ran like absolute royalty. If he continues on that same path today, it's going to be a quick final table, and we'll have to put his face on the King of Spades. As we turn our attention to the chip stacks, it's clear most of the players at this table have their work cut out for them. Dan Smith's good year continues. He sits on top of the pile with over 4.8 million. His friend from across the international boundary, Mike McDonald, is far behind with 30% of the chips in play. Next up, the Mexican pro, JC Alvarado, which is under 2 million, meaning the top three players have more than 70% of the chips in play. The aggressive and always dangerous Finn, Elani Sahamir, sits in fourth place with exactly 1.4 million. Eric Seidel will be hoping his experience will counter his lack of chips. He sits down with 956,000. Averages 5% of the chips in play is the businessman from England, Talal Shikurchi. 
Jim McCrink is down but not out. He has just under 700,000. And last, and by all means least, is Michael Watson. He'll have to do something special. He's got just 10 big blinds. <laughs> These are our final eight players for this event. Let's give them a big round of applause for making it thus far. You're all winners in my book. The win here won't put Eric back to number one, but it will make him so much more number two-er. Mike McDonald won his first EPT when he was just a pimply-faced team. Oh, ship it, sir. Danny Smith won 100K by him, but it wasn't a super high roller because that's our thing, okay? We do that. Did you change? I don't remember you having that shirt on for some reason. You really think I own more than one nice shirt? Well, the other one wasn't nice, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but he said they were the same. I see what you did there. Blinds 20,000 and 40,000 with a 5,000 ante. Action on Mike Watson. It is a nice shirt. He faults. 810 for Dan Smith. The chip leader gives that up. Jim McCrink. Whack. Whack. Yeah, probably for the best. Pocket Queens. Henry. Elie Sahami is raising from the cutoff. Gets a fold from Talal Shakirchi. And from JC Alvarado. Mike McDonald in the big blind as A6 suited. Even though we know Mike's way behind, this would be a pretty standard spot to defend. It'll cost him an additional 60,000. He does call. He's getting a little bit better than three to one. Heads up to the flop. 9 10 7 with two spades. Mike flops the dummy end of the gut shot. I'm Mike McDonald. Oh. Checks and only checks behind. Very bizarre check behind. Three of spades on the turn. Maybe Hillary was just checking behind, thinking he can get Mike to fire off later, and there he goes. There he goes. McDonald leads for 166,000. By playing this a little passively, yes, it's risky, but Hillary gets in the bet a lot of the hands you would typically fold right. if you were bet into, just like the one he's got. Then will call. Hillary looking for Mike to fire again on the river. The river card is a queen. Hillary improves to a set. That set doesn't really mean much. He's ahead of a teensy tiny more of Mike's range, like smaller sets, but he's not ahead of a flush. Mike could also easily have. That's the main drawback of Ziegman checking that flop. Mike leads for 266,000. So even though Ziegman river top set, I don't think he can raise here. He's counting out chips for a call. And he does call. Ace high. Ace high, no good. Ziegman terrified he's got a flush. Ace high. Makes way more sense that he's high. I think Siegman accidentally slow rolled him there. So Hilary Sahami has adds nearly 600,000 chips to his stack. Still confused that set of queens was good. Bit of a blow to McDonald, down to 4.3 million. Hilary now up to nearly 2 million. Remember, every player at this final table has locked up nearly 123,000 euros. The winner will get more than a million. Several players in this tournament bought in more than one time, but none of these players did. Queen Jack off suit for Talal Shikirchi. That goes in the muck. Who says old guys are tight? He's five. JC Alvarado also gets folded. Mike McDonald's out. Seidel passes. Junk for Mike Watson on the button. Still thinking about it. Nah. Mm -hmm. Dan Smith with the chip lead in the small blind. Yes, sir, chips, please. Dan should be raising him here 100% of the time and just calling the shove. Or. Yep, he bets enough to put McCrink all in. Snap call. Snap call. Snap call. Good luck. McCrink eventually makes the call. Nice call. Jim won't need luck. He'll just need some non-unluck. Hearts are my favorite too, just, just so you're warned. And I'm a flush specialist. And he's been running super hot in this tournament so far. And he's dressed like a plumber, one of the Mario brothers. That's the wrong color. That's the proper color. Oh, yeah. Specialist, more like a shaman. Nine of hearts would be pretty great. Well, that's sporting. 
There's Jim's wife on the rail. She doesn't want to see a heart. There it is. That'll do it for McCrink. I'm just playing with you. You are a flesh specialist, aren't you? You should see him work the urinal. Jim McCrink, first man out of the EPT Barcelona Super High Roller. Good luck, Talal. Good luck, Larry. Amazing thing, Mike Watson came in with 10 big blinds, and he wasn't the first guy out. All right, Mike. All right, good luck. Mike, you bet. JC. So Dan Smith extends his chip lead. Jim McCrink got McCrunked. He'll walk away with nearly 123,000 euros. Lines are up to 25 and 50,000 with a 5,000 ante as seven handed play begins. Elodie Sahamias mucks from under the gun. Talal Shikurchi folds. Ace 10 suited for JC Alvarado. Ali just trying to conjure up a raise amount. He limps. Well, that is just bizarre. Mike McDonald, 7-5 of clubs. Two more clubs out. Folds. Eric Seidel has only looked at one of his cards, and he calls. Lots of hands Seidel could be just calling with on the button. 8-9, 9-9, 10-9, Jack-9, 7-9, Queen-9. Well, Queen-9 is what Mike Watson has, and he calls as well out of the small blind. Look what this limping has started. It's going to stop right here, because Dan Smith has kings in the big blind. Now Dan gets to squeeze a monster in a spot with a stack where everyone's expecting him to squeeze just because he can. What an absolute dream. He raises to 200,000. I'm not sure I feel about JC's limp, but I know it's definitely a call after the raise. He does call. Eric Seidel will fold. Now I'll never know what that other card was. Mike Watson folds as well. We're going heads up to the flop. Danny Smith likes to recheck his monsters. It's an ace high flop. Alvarado now in front. Dan could get in trouble here. He's been the one doing the sucking out in this tournament, not the one getting sucked out on. He bets 175,000. Standard continuation bet. And you're certainly not folding top pair. Alvarado calls. Are the alarm bells going off inside Dan Smith's little hairy body? Let's see what the turn brings. The seven of spades. Dan slows down. He checks. Dan's not often going to be checking a bigger ace once the board gets wetter, so I think JC will think it's safe to bet this himself. He does bet 260,000. This leaves JC with only a three quarters pot size bet on the river. Dan probably still has to call here because JC doesn't necessarily need to have an ace to call the flop and bet the turn. So many draws just developed. Smith calls. We go to the river, which is the four of clubs. Well, that's a total brick for both players. Doesn't change much about the board. Dan Smith checks again. JC Alvarado checks behind. Dan's not gonna like the look of that. I'm actually surprised JC didn't bet the river there. He must think there's no way Dan ever calls with anything worse. But the way he played it, Dan can almost never have anything better. You know what bottom of receiver is saying? They agree with me. Yep. JC Alvarado up to nearly 2.2 million. Dan Smith down to nearly 5.5 million, but still the tournament chip leader. Alvarado played that ace-10 suited unconventionally. What do you make of the limit call there? Use hashtag EPT Barcelona. Stars EPT Barcelona, where day 1A of the main event is now underway. Many of the top names have turned out, or hoping they can get their season off with a bang. Meanwhile, there's the small matter of crowning the first super high roller champion of season 9. Seven players remain. There's Lex Veldhaus. Now, I don't want to say Lex goes broke a lot on TV, but that was his second longest appearance. It's day 1A of the main event underway here in Barcelona. We'll be covering the tournament from day 1B. First, we're going to crown a champion in this super high roller tournament. Talal Shikurchi is the last remaining amateur. 
And he has raised from under the gun with 9-10 suited. He's made it 110,000 to play. We saw him fold Queen Jack off from a little later position earlier on. Now he's raising 10-9 suited under the gun. Action's been folded around to the big blind. He'll at least to Hamias with ace queen of spades, and he will call Shikurchi's race. If spades hit, Shikurchi will be using them to dig his own grave. And speaking of death, anyone think Siegmund looks like the guy from the seventh seal? Ha, <laughs> nice spot. <laughs> A jack seven queen flop. Up and down draw for Shikurchi. Top pair, top kicker for Sahamias. No spades, dang it. Check to the razor. Shikurchi bets 165,000. Hillary, let Shikurchi continue. This is a draw-heavy board. This is one of those instances where you can raise top-top. And he does raise to 425,000. Shikurchi's never ahead in this spot. With his stack, he's only got two moves. I'm all in. And that's one of them, to move all in. I was actually going to say they were both fold. Talal goes for the big semi-bluff. It seems a little out of character and a little ill-timed. I don't know how often banked Ekarod is bluff-raising there. Okay, I call. Hillary calls. Kings? No, no, no. God, no. So Shikurchi needs to hit to survive. Props, by the way, for the Bergman gag. I appreciated it. I'm probably the only person who did, but that's by the by. I don't know if that was a compliment or an insult. <laughs> it's another seven on the turn, so Shikurchi's still drawing to a king or an eight. He has eight outs. The river is a ten. We lose Talal Shikurchi in seventh place. But don't cry for him, Barcelona. He's already a millionaire. <laughs> Now, where is the valet ticket for my yacht? No, nope, that's not it. Shikurchi wins more than 138,000 euros. Hilary Sahamias gets his stack up to nearly 2.7 million. So he's just above average. A six-handed play begins. And the short stack at the beginning of the day, Mike Watson has somehow managed to ladder up at least two spots and lock up at least 30,000 more euros. King Queen suited. And Watson is all in. It's a great hand to get it in with. It's like having three cards. Folded round to Mike McDonald in the big blind. How much is it exact? Uh, I call. With Ace Jack, he will call. Yeah, you do. And this is pretty much a race. At least these guys are both wearing their best shirts. Mike Watson looking for a king or a queen or spades to survive. Instead, there's a Jack on the flop. That Jack is actually good because it doesn't kill any of Mike's outs and it helps him make a straight draw, giving him four more outs. Scotch, scotch, scotch. Queen on the turn. Great Odin's Raven. Now Mike needs to hit out. He needs to hit an ace or a jack. There's an 89% chance Watson survives. The spectators waiting for the river card, which is a four. So Mike Watson gets the double up. 465? Yeah. Watson will now have a stack of 985,000. Pretty impressive considering he started the day with 3% of the chips in play. Mike McDonald down to 3.8 million, 76 big blind stack. There's a lot of good players uh, at this final table. Mike Watson's one of my like oldest friends within poker. Probably talked more poker with him than all but a couple guys. He's uh, a lot of competition. Right now, the person I'll be battling with the most for sure is Dan Smith, since between he and I, we have probably 60% of the chips in play or something like that. Eric Seidel, I think, is one of the best tournament players in the world. He's on my direct left. Like, if he ends up running up the stack, he'd be pretty tough to play against as well. I definitely found it in the last year or so, I've kind of become desensitized to the big buy-ins. Like, I remember when I was 18, I played a $100,000 buy-in in Australia. And then as I was sitting down at the tournament, I was just thinking, like, what the hell am I doing? Like, this, it felt like, you know, so much money. I'd never held, like, $100,000 cash in my hand before that. Like, I used to get, you know, more nervous bluffing someone in a 100K than in a 1K. Now it all feels pretty similar. I really do want to win this tournament, but it's nice to finally get a cash and hopefully nice to finally get a win in one. You see how he only signed his first name and it kind of looked like a caveman did it? Stay in school, kids. Have you ever tried signing your name on some plexiglass? It's not easy. I can't say that I have, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that trophy is a thing of beauty. Action has been folded to Mike Watson in the cutoff. He's been the beneficiary of another double up, so he starts the hand with 1.9 million. He's got ace four suited, and he is raising to 110,000. Now, while Mike was short, he's been playing super tight. Ace queen for Dan Smith. 9.35 that hand? 
890 I had. Another 1.9 now. Dan might be realizing that Mike could be opening things up a bit now that he's not super short anymore. There's the three bet from Smith to 255,000 jacks for Ellery Samias. I think with a relative short stack raising and the biggest stack re-raising in position, you're usually pretty happy to go crazy here. He four bets to 575,000. Or in Zygmunt's case, passionately emotionless. Alvarado with fives in the big blind. Fives, come on with your fives, come on. Yeah, he folds. Watson will give up the ace four. I'm assuming Dan will want to take a flop in position. I'm all in. Instead, he shoves. What? I guess that's the power of the big stack. He's got to have something pretty good to call you. And then he folds. Wow. Whoa. I am all for not wanting to take a race or even flipping for your tournament life. However, if you're going to fold to the five bet, save yourself the four bet. It's like going to an auction and bidding against yourself. An incredible lay down by the Fen, who's best known for playing the nosebleed stakes cash games. He's rumored to have made about $3 million playing online. We've seen him on the EPT before when he made the final table of the high roller event in London back in season six. Well, he's reasonably short stack now as the blinds go up to 30,000 and 60,000 with a 10,000 ante. Action on Dan Smith. Chip leader folds. Ilari Sahami has starts this hand with fewer than 20 big blinds. All in. And with ace jack suited, he shoves. Clearly, he's been in a slide since he folded those jacks pre flop. Now he's open shoving ace jack suited. Eric Seidel in the big blind has ace 10. How much? 1.1. Seidel is covered with just under 20 bigs himself. He knows Ilari would have to shove a lot of hands that are worse than ace 10. Seidel calls. And we'll see he's way behind. He is dominated, but for once he's dominating in the hair department. Eric once had a cameo on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I do not think Larry would approve of this ball on ball violence. The flop. Five deuce eight with two spades. No ten. We may be about to lose Eric Seidel. <laughs> Robbie the ring announcer claims Eric needs to catch ten running spades. <laughs> that's, that's a big pilot. <laughs> <laughs> No spade on the turn, Seidel drawing to a 10. Two outs. He needs a 10 and he needs it to be red. The river is a king. We lose Eric Seidel. He finishes in sixth place for just over 153,000 euros. And Hillary is not out of the woods just yet. He's not even back to average. Eric Seidel has gone so deep in so many of these, it's really only a matter of time before he wins one. Sure, they flew over together, but they're all like 5'8". They don't need your kind of legroom stretch. So we've lost McCrink, Shikurchi, and Seidel. Sahamias, Alvarado, and Watson all have 35 big blinds apiece. Mike McDonald second on the leaderboard, but way out in front, Dan Smith with 6.2 million. It's a very tough table. I mean, anytime you play a super high roller, you're going to get the best players in the world. So, uh, you know, when you get down there, you you know, you really need to have things go well. Any of the people who are left can win. I mean, they're 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 all excellent. Excellent. San Dimas High School football rules. So we're now five-handed at this final table. Action on Ilari Sahamias. He folds. JC Alvarado looks down at pocket jacks. JC with the JJ. He gonna limp again? No, he's raising to 125,000. Mike McDonald has ace jack. Mike might be real tempted to three bet here, but I don't think JC will be ditching them as easily as Hillary did, if at all. <laughs> McDonald will re raise. That is a three bet to 295,000. Mike Watson, a 6-4 off. He'll muck that. Dan Smith in the big blind. Won't be playing 10-5. In my home game, we call that the hand that never wins. So it's back on JC. 
This is where huge leveling wars go down. Neither one of them has to have a hand to do what they've done so far, so they can both be acting on position and reputation. There's no reason why JC wouldn't try to get in another bet here. He does fall back to 635,000. On. Oh. Oh. Mike McDonald knows as soon as he's called, he must be behind. I immediately regret this decision. Alvarado, 68% favorite to double up here. No ace on the flop. JC's in pretty sweet shape after this flop. Just has to fade. An ace on the river. Mike's down to just one last card. Plea to the poker gods? Or just Justin Bonomo. The river is a seven. So Alvarado doubles up, and McDonald will be crippled down to 1.2 million. He's lost three quarters of the chips that he came to this final table with. Justin Bonomo talking to Faraz Jacques about his days as a chicken rustler. Mike not left with very much at all. Timex now playing a 20 big blind stack. If you want to play in an EPT event, go to pokerstars.com, where there are qualifiers every day. remain in this Pokestars.com EPT Super High Roller. And if Revenge of the Dish best served cold, Mike Watson is one player who will be hoping to put a stop to Dan Smith's eater. Dan Smith and Mike McDonald are my best and oldest friends in poker, so there's always going to be those bragging points up, uh, up for grabs against your friends, and both of them knocked me out in a big tournament recently. So I'm looking for some revenge today. It's going to be tough, but I uh, definitely want to uh, set the record straight. Well, if you can't get back at them at the poker table, this is always fun to do while traveling. Fill your friend's suitcase with biscuits. Doesn't that gag normally involve dog biscuits? No, these are regular biscuits because the friend is on Atkins. Didn't I say that? That was a pertinent detail that you omitted. <laughs> <laughs> Action has been folded to Mike McDonald, who has ace 10 under the gun plus one. Huh? And he's raising, makes it 120,000. Oh, yeah. Mike McDonald, you are my little gentle man. Mike Watson on the button. Six deuce, he'll muck that. Dan Smith in the small blind. That's ace jack of clubs. Yep. This is 1,000% a three bet. There's a good shot these two get it in here, provided Hillary doesn't wake up with a monster. Smith will re-raise, makes it 295,000. Hillary does not have a hand. It's back on Mike McDonald. Well, Mike McDonald, win in Rome. Oh, shh, it's girlfriend Cam. This is Dan's girlfriend, Monica. Hi, Monica. He shoves. I call. And Dan Smith calls. Sweet Lincoln's mullet. It's Domination Nation for Mike McDonald and his Ron Burgundy shirt. Mike McDonald's kind of a big deal, but unfortunately, Dan Smith has many leather-bound books. That is a horrible flop for McDonald. Mike, only 7% to survive this hand now. It's science. Looking for a 10. Now looking for a jack. Well, he didn't lose any equity there. It's so damn hot. Milk was a bad choice. Three outs for Timex. No jack on the river. He's eliminated in fifth place. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, it really got out of hand fast. Brick killed the guy. Nice playing with him. Handshakes all around. Stay classy, Waterloo, Ontario, Canada. A disappointing finish for Mike McDonald. He started the day as one of the big stacks, second in chips, and not that far behind Dan Smith. So he was probably expecting a better return than 215,000 euros. And Dan Smith's chip lead is now just ridiculous. 7.4 million. Come on. My name is Dan Smith. I am 23 years old. I'm a professional poker player. Two years ago, me and Mike Watson, we were very drunk in Australia, and as a way of celebrating, we invented the nub, which is elbow to elbow, and it caught on amongst our group of friends, and it became a bit more than that, and now I, am, I wear a Dance with Nub shirt. And the first tournament I ever wore it for 
was the Super High Roller Tournament in Australia, which I won. So I'm not superstitious in the slightest, but just in case there's something going on, I can't afford not to wear it. <laughs> it would be very cool to win this. I've never actually gotten a trophy or anything for winning a tournament, and it's a lot of money. <laughs> I'm trying to make a run for Player of the Year, and this would give me a very good chance to win. I heard Dan Smith is going to change his name to Stax McNasty. Either that or Rakes McChip Uppington. So we're now four-handed. All the remaining players guaranteed at least 300,000 euros. Action's on Mike Watson. He has Queen Jack off suit under the gun, and he raises to 130,000. Dan Smith still stacking Mike McDonald's chips. Well, it takes a while when you have seven and a half million of them. Lions are still 30-60, Dan. Ace 10 of clubs. Well, he's certainly not folding. Question is, will he call, play a flop in position, or re-raise? He calls. He calls not wanting to let Mike get away, but now it's him. He's going to have to get away. Elodie Sami is with ace-queen suited in the small blind. Three bets to 400,000. JC Alvarado has king-queen in the big blind. What in the heck is going on here? Are we playing with a pinochle deck? JC folds, as does Mike Watson. Action's back on Dan Smith. Hillary had every single hand dominated somehow. Smith probably can't fold this in position, and if he calls, he's got to pretty much call any bet on the flop as well. Come on, Lynn. He shoves. I call. And Hillary calls. And despite the fact that he's behind, this was a great pressure shove from the big stack. He knows Hillary is going to be three betting a pretty wide range, some of which he could fold. And now that he's gotten in bad, he can still lose without it hurting much. Hillary is ahead, but he is the player at risk. Kymppi tulee aina. Mulla on fiilis, mä tiedän. Siikastaan kymppi tulee aina. Hillary says he always gets stung by a 10, and he can feel it's coming. Well, Dan Smith hasn't lost many of these confrontations, no matter what he's held. I don't know if he's lost any. Here comes the flop. Which has a 10 on it. Hillary's feeling was correct. Dan sucked out more often than the world's worst rattlesnake handler. Hillary Samias has one out because JC Alvarado and Mike Watson both folded queens. Peter Jetton on the right. He busted out just before the final table. Hillary with just 11% equity. Make that 3%. One last card in the deck that can save him. One chance to hit it. Dan Smith about to be an absolute beast. The river is not the case, Queen. We lose Hillary Samias in fourth place. I hate cliches like this, but this is Dan Smith's tournament to win right now. Hillary Samias will collect just shy of 292,000 euros. And Dan Smith is cruising to victory on a stack of 9.6 million. He is an unstoppable rebel force. Lines up to 40 at 80,000 with a 10K ante as three-handed play begins. JC Alvarado with 6-4 suited on the button. Raises to 160K. Mike Watson has 6-5 suited, but folds. Dan Smith, 9-10 off. Dan getting some sweet pot odds. And he has all the chips in the world. So he calls out of the big blind. And we go to the flop. Ace Jack 10. Smith still in front. Checks to Alvarado. Bottom pair, way good. See if JC continues. He does, 225,000. I'd imagine it's gonna take at least two. Did Dan fold a pair on the flop? He did. There you go, kids, the C-bet still works. Way to go, JC. Alvarado started playing poker eight years ago in a diner. Wherever he finishes here in Barcelona, he's guaranteed the biggest live cash of his career. Well, what would I do with the money if I win? Um, back in the day, I used to spend a lot of money on stupid things. Uh, I bought a really expensive car once, and that was dumb. Now, I've grown older and don't really spend, but, you know, I'd like to build a house or something. JC played his first hand of poker over pancakes. Must be where he learned to work their short stack. Hiya! Wow, it's only the fifth show of the season. I fear you've peaked too soon. <laughs> I said hi -ya. Mike Watson, the short stack on the button, raises with ace-eight. Dan Smith, his junk in the small blind. 
He folds. JC Alvarado in the big blind has King Queen suited. Can I see how many blocks you have? Like when your girlfriend asks you which of her friends you find most attractive, I see where this is going. And it's leading to a confrontation. All in. All in. Alvarado shoves on Watson. Okay. And he calls. Nobody's that thrilled about it, but it had to be done. If Mike's ace holds, these two will be separated by less than four big blinds. It's practically 50-50. The flop has a queen on it. Alvarado takes the lead. Mike Watson now at risk. JC can't even look at his buddy. Neither one of them can look at each other. Watson needs an ace on the river. Three of them in the deck. Keep that head down. Are we going heads up in this super high roller? Yes, we are. Mike Watson out in third place. He will collect nearly 400,000 euros. Good luck, boys. Mike came in today as the short stack. Ten big blinds, 3% of the chips in play. Everyone would have expected him to go out in eighth place. He laddered all the way up to third. Job well done, Mike Watson. And he's going to stick around to watch his buddies play. We're going to end up playing for, like, oh, that is oh, really easy. Easy. Like, 200K. How much do you have? Do you know? I smell deal talk. I think I gain, I won a small amount of chips, so I think I have slightly over 10 million. Literally the worst. Of okay, um, I'm, it's incredibly, incredibly easy. Can I have a pen and piece of paper, please? Yeah. Alright, you're good at this. Is that a lot? No. Come on. What do you got? What, what are the it, it, it should be pretty easy. You should be the, the best at this. We just want a chip chop with 100k to play it. Oh, yeah. I'll I mean, maybe. Oh, time. he'll do it. Okay, and we're leaving 100 yeah, to play for. I mean, it is terrible. incredibly easy, but I guess an impartial person to do it is fair. Well, what's first? I feel like all my math. The difference is. Just tell me what the difference is. The difference is 398.9. Is that before or after the 100 to play? That is. Before. Uh, before. It's 298,900 because you have to leave. <laughs> you have to leave 100k to play. I think they're overcomplicating this. Take 100 off the top, split what's left using a simple quadratic equation. No. Come on. Okay, here. John. Look, has. think. First place. Oh, is, oh wait, we're getting. Right, in, in addition, in addition, it's 186. Up. In addition to to second place. In addition to the winner, we'll get 100k. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, 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 that's fine. For, and then uh, let's just figure out the number so we don't make any mistakes. The number that he would get. Okay, sure, sure. I get uh, seven, eight, six, seven, four. All right. Are you ready to break yep. the deal? All right. Good luck, bud. Good luck. A deal has been reached, but they're still playing for 100,000 euros and the super high roller title. What do you think? Good deal? Bad deal? Let us know your thoughts and tag your tweets. EPT Barcelona. We're heads up at the PokerStars.com EPT Barcelona Super High Roller which means one of these players will be taking home the first title of season nine. JC Alvarado is sitting on a stack of over seven and a half million, while Dan Smith has maintained his chip lead throughout the final table and now has almost 8.5 million. No. No. Apparently that's a <laughs> thing they do. Just as long as that's the only nubs they're rubbing together, this is a family show. Blind still 4080 with a 10k ante. Remember the trophy still in play, along with 100,000 euros. King six on the button to JC Alvarado. It's a raise to 160. Dan Smith is Queen Jack in the big blind. Usually just a call out of position. You generally want to see a flop with this. Dan does call. Yeah, you guys got some nice nubs on you, don't you? Like them nubs. Please stop, you're creeping me out. <laughs> An ace, seven, three flop. Both players miss. King high, still good. Dan Smith checks to the razor. JC Alvarado checks behind. Eight of diamonds on the turn. JC's king high, still good. No real reason for anyone to bet this. 
Dan Smith checks a second time. JC checks a second time. The river is a nine. Both players have missed on every street. Looks like Dan's gonna bet. Because he can't beat hardly anything. 280,000 into a pot of 340,000. This would be a really sick call by JC. He does call. Wow, that is an excellent call. Dan could have easily been value betting an eight or a nine in that spot, so that is a very tough call to make. JC Alvarado wins the pot and takes the chip lead. Let's go. Wow, that was more than patronizing. If poker doesn't work out for him, I think Dan's got a real solid career ahead of him at the Department of Motor Vehicles. And my license just got revoked. Having been a passenger in your car, I'd say it's probably for the best. We got there. 9-10 for Dan Smith on the button in the small blind. Raises to 225,000. Pocket queens for JC Alvarado. Not only does JC have the chip lead, but now he's getting hands. Typically, the ladies come after you in the super high roller, but I'm sure he's happy to see them now. He three bets to 700,000. Things turning around here for Dan Smith. Is his golden run over? Possibly. That hand's a teensy bit weak to be calling three bets with. Smith flops bottom pair and a straight draw. JC's holding two outs to his gut shot, though, and his implied odds aren't great if he hits it. He goes check, check on the flop, and it's a nine on the turn. I spoke too soon. Dan Smith's run is by no means over. And unfortunately for JC, that's going to look like a very safe card for him. JC now bets 750K. JC looks a little agitated. You know Dan's not reaching for chips with total air here. Best case scenario, he's got a jack or a super strong draw. Worst case, the hand he's got. Smith calls, we go to the river, which is the inconsequential two of clubs. That is such a brick, JC might think he can bet for value. Poor guy. He is betting 1.4 million. Dan most likely should be raising this river. It's really easy for JC to be value betting worse, which he is, and he's just not gonna be beat very often. Also, it's such a polarizing spot that he's gonna get paid off a fair amount of the time. That is a big raise, 4.8 million total. And we had to cut away because JC just threw up in his mouth a little. Shoots him a look. It's a very polarizing bet. Dan's either got a nine or he doesn't. JC's put so many chips in this pot and was probably so sure he had the best hand. This spot is grosser than the piece of carpet the dog sleeps on. Alvarado makes a great lay down. Another really well played hand by JC. It's a shame he had to lose it. Nice hand, Dan. And Dan Smith is back on top. I'm so much better at heads up now than I was last time I played heads up at a TV table. When was that? And yet it's still going the same way. <laughs> because you're playing against the guy who runs better than Jesse Owens. In fact, let's take a look at some of the monsters that King Dan has reigned supreme with over the course of this tournament. He's had boats, he's had quads, plural. He won Ace King versus Ace King. And in all these situations, he's been lucky enough to run into very costly second best hands for his opponents. As the blinds go up to 50 and 100,000, Dan Smith has more than a two to one chip lead over JC Alvarado. 10-7 suited on the button, he raises to 225. The old suited two gapper. Alvarado with a suited queen six will call. Pretty call. standard defend heads up. Flop, 7-5-9. Both flop gut shots, both have a blocker. But check, Dan's check. got a pair, which is gonna be the nuts for now. Check, check, king of clubs on the turn. Alvarado. Looking to bluff at this. Leading for 500,000. And that's weird, he's over bet the pot here on the turn. You'd think if he had a value hand, he'd maybe want to bet small enough to, you know, get some value. Dan Smith goals. Looks like it's gonna take oh. another big barrel from JC on the river. That river card is the nine of clubs. Changes nothing. Let her rip, JC. Let her rip, JC. JC? I don't know. Maybe he's thinking about waving the white flag. He checks. 
Dan checks behind. I know. Dan calls the overbet with third pair on the turn, and he's right. He must be brimming with more confidence than a frat boy after his third rum and diet. Smith with a massive chip lead now. Yep, that's your man over there. You get to say you do him way back when. You know, like way back when he was already a millionaire. Lines up again, 61-20 with a 20K ante. Kings for Alvarado. JC's got about 20 bigs. 250. He raises to 250. Dan Smith has ace king. Oh, it's all going in here. Really good spot for JC to double up. All in. Oh. Smith shots, Alvarado calls. Now, even with this loss, Dan's still going to have a monster stack compared to JC. He'll still have more than a two to one chip lead. Don't assume it will be a loss. Dan Smith has got lucky from time to time in this tournament. Truth. He does have an overcard. He does have 30% equity. The flop. Has an ace on it. Oh, man, isn't that the story of this tournament? That's the whole story. Dan Smith plays good. Dan Smith gets business end of cooler. Dan Smith gets there. The end. Might be the one outer. Just one card in the deck can save JC Alvarado. Second place is pretty good. Burn. Dan Smith is on the verge of lifting the trophy here in Barcelona. The only river card that will stop that happening is the king of spades. It's a three, Dan Smith has done it. JC Alvarado is the runner up, but bow before King Dan, who's earned the super high roller crown. It was destiny. Kid could do no wrong. Thank you. Dan railed by many of his peers and friends, including his roommate, our third place finisher, Mike Watson, and EPT finalist, Ron Lou. Remember, they cut a deal heads up, which sees JC Alvarado receive nearly 789,000 euros. Dan Smith will collect nearly 963,000 euros. Plus, he gets the champion's trophy. Yeah, it was the hottest I've ever run in any tournament. I had two full houses that I won a bunch with. I made quads twice, and like, it was just unreal. I was friendly with a bunch of the guys, and on the final table, it just kind of felt like we were just hanging out, you know? And we just happened to be playing for a little bit of money, but it wasn't too stressful. It was, happened to run really well. It was actually a really simple deal, just my internet wasn't working, but it was our uh, buddy, uh, John Aguiar. And we also had Scott over there doing it by hand. And they managed to come up with the same number, so that was convenient. So the first title of the new EPT season has been claimed. Once again, a star-studded field turned out to take up the challenge of the Super High Roller. Eric Seidel and Mike McDonald finally recorded their first EPT caches in this format. JC Alvarado came close but couldn't overcome the unstoppable Dan Smith. Second place is pretty good. So King Dan lifts the trophy, saving the knowledge he sits high on his throne as the Super High Roller champ. Join us next time when Dan and the rest of the poker world return for the EPT Barcelona main event.